open Live 2D and drag the PSD file in. Select full scale, unless your computer is not going to handle much. And for dark mode, you go into file, environment settings, and dark. First thing you notice is that your clipping layers are going to unclip, and we're going to clip it back. The navigation is zoom in and out using mouse wheel, hold and drag on the mouse wheel to move around, or space and drag. Okay, so we're going to clip the face shadow to face space. We're going to select face space, control C, and then select face shadow, control V in this clipping ID. Hit enter. It just means your current layer is going to stay inside of whichever layers you have in here. Deselect by clicking escape or just clicking the void. So I'm going to do that for the eyes too. So select eye white, control C, then select iris and shift select the first highlight. And you'll select everything in between, control V. Um, I don't see it. I shift select everything and control enter. My nose line is supposed to stay inside of nose mask. Everything inside the mouth should stay inside of inner mouth. If you're having trouble selecting something, you can right click, object cursor, and neck. Control C, neck tattoo, clip it inside the neck. And then the chain inside of the leg. And then I'm gonna select the background and delete it because you can change the background color in here. Okay, then Control A. Select everything, click Auto Mesh Generator. In Presets, click Standard. Standard is good for now, and we're going to remesh the layers that need more details later. Then select everything on the head, but deselect your neck. Control to select or deselect. And click a rotation deformer. Name it Head Z. Create. Hold control and drag it to the center of the chin. Make sure that it aligns with the nose and it is perfectly in the center. Click angle Z, add three keyforms. These parameters consisting of key points is where the animation is going to occur. Drag it to the left key point. Angle Z means head tilting and we just want our head to tilt at that key point. And reflect the motion. Reflect horizontally, click OK. And that just reflects the motion on the other side of your selected parameter. Right click on the key point to snap to it. Then we're going to make the neck tilt with it. So select neck with the neck to two. Click on this warp deformer. Name it neck Z. And it's off center, so we're going to recenter it using control. And the shift is just so that you move in a straight line. I can also make it thinner by clicking Control Alt. Then in this number of divisions, change it to 5 by 10 and that will give you more vertical points to work with when you're transforming. And then add three keyforms on angle Z and drag it to the left one. Then transform the neck deformer to fit the head tilt by selecting the upper half of the neck deformer and tilting it. Reflect motion. Some other riggers like to transform the hair along with the head tilt, but I prefer to do that later in physics. So we are done head Z. Okay, save your files, guys. I forgot to say this earlier, but some layer modes will revert back to normal. So this was supposed to be additive, and we're going to scroll down onto here, the blend mode, additive. There is only additive and multiply in Live 2D, but for most things, that should be enough. Click Escape to deselect, and we're going to move on to eye rigging. So before we move on to eye rigging, I would like to recap for those unfamiliar with Live 2D about the basics of Live 2D using what we just did. So this is the working area. This is the animation or key points, key form area with all your parameters that are going to be tracked later with VTube Studio or other applications. And this is the tool details and inspector area for changing conversion numbers, brush sizes, layer settings, etc. Top left is layering and folders area, similar to your PSD file where you can rearrange the layers. And bottom left is the deformer area where the layers are grouped by deformers that they belong to. 
Animation-wise, each layer needs to be meshed to be warped. The more mesh points on the layer, the more detailed or smoother it can be warped. Sometimes the auto mesh will mess up, usually this happens to me with line art, and you'll need to manually edit it to fill the gaps in manual mesh edit. And just connect the dots until your full image is inside the dots. In some rare cases for me, auto mesh will make my entire layer disappear. In that case, I go to project, model image, and I find the layer and I right click, create art mesh. And it'll just give me a new one that I'll re-auto mesh it until it's correct. And don't forget to put it back into the deformer that it belongs to. We can attach either the layers itself to the animation key points or deformers. There are two types of deformers, warp deformers and rotation deformers. A warp deformer just moves and warps its child objects, which means the things inside of it, and that will be layers or other warp deformers. For smoother and more detailed warps, go for more convergent points or heavier mesh for the layers below. Next we have rotation deformers. It can move and rotate layers and other deformers under it. But if a rotation deformer is under a parent warp deformer, for example if I drag the head Z into next Z, the things inside of the rotation deformer will not be warped. It can only be moved and rotated by its parent warp. For example if I deleted my head rotation, and now the things inside of it are in next Z, but next Z is not covering up all of the head, this is what happens. And yeah, so this is why we usually want the warp parent to be bigger than all the layers and other transformations underneath. Hopefully that made sense, but if not, you can still follow my step-by-step -step and understand all this later.